Next to Libya, the latest on the flooding there, Derna, one of the worst hit areas. A BBC team says there's no electricity and local people are continuing to search for bodies in the dark. Our correspondent Anna Foster sent this. Even by night, Derna's recovery teams don't sleep. As darkness falls, another body is carefully pulled from the ruins, wrapped and taken to a waiting ambulance. It's a scene that's now been repeated thousands of times. I can't describe when you see a people death and maybe when, when you see one or two, it's, you can you can hold yourself, you know. But when you see maybe it's 500 people in, in one street, there's women, child, uh, old people, this grainy security camera footage is from the moment when the floods hit and Derna was changed forever. Two dams meant to protect the city were broken apart by the force of the water. The deluge carried everything away with it. This wave of death and destruction sealed the fate of thousands. And glimpses of the horror are still emerging. Here in Derna, people began to pray for God's mercy. When the torrent passed, some were able to escape. As the rain continued to fall, they headed to the rooftops, with few understanding the scale of the unfolding catastrophe. Down below, the force of the water swept away everything in its wake. Those who could sought safety on higher ground. It's things like this that really show you the explosive power of the water that cascaded through this city. Things like cars that have been picked up and crushed all through these streets. There have been trees ripped from their roots. And you can see now this scar on the landscape where buildings once stood, people once lived, and there's nothing left. Rescuers are still working here day and night. And perhaps improbably, almost a week after this disaster, there are still hopes of survival. Speak to us so we can find where you are, the team calls out. Turkish rescuers wade through the pools of destruction in search of what remains. The thick mud and dirt coats everything and makes the work slow and dangerous. The risk of disease is growing. Our feelings towards the city is very difficult to describe, to be honest with you. We lost friends, relatives and a big portion of Derna society. People are returning to Derna, not to resume their lives, but to identify the dead. The bodies keep coming, laid out on city pavements in the hope they might be claimed. Eastern Libya has been hideously transformed. We travelled across a shattered landscape, Derna's distinctive mosque a lone survivor among the ravaged homes and smashed bridge that once stood here. In al Baida, Ahmad al-Hawal says life as he knew it has ended. Oh, I see. It came from here and completely washed away the valley. It hit the wall and destroyed everything around it. Ahmad is one of more than 30,000 people desperate for shelter, food and water. Libya's eastern government failed to protect them from this disaster. Now, in their greatest hour of need, it's struggling to cope with the aftermath. Anna Foster, BBC News, Derna. Well, let's go live now to our Middle East correspondent, Lena Sinjab. Uh, Lena, what's the latest? Lena, I'm afraid uh, just having some sound problems there with that connection. We'll just give it a few seconds to try again and see if we can re-establish that line with that connection. Our Middle East correspondent, uh, Lena Sinjab, I think we can re establish that line. Lena, just uh, bring us up to date with the latest. The rescue operation is ongoing around the clock, day and night. Rescuers are trying to continue to pull out, uh, you know, bodies from the water under rubbles. But it's a, such a hard operation to take place. The authorities in eastern Libya said uh, that they have sealed off the area of Derna from civilians to allow better space for rescuers to search for dead bodies. Uh, you know, the, some of the bodies are still washed off the, uh, the water and, uh, you know, some are still under rubble. So it's 
it's it's really difficult operation for them, especially, especially that the streets of Derna are you know covered with mud and derbies, and uh, you know um, you know the smell of corpses spread everywhere. There are fears of the diseases spreading, um, and relatives and still looking for their beloved ones. And as we heard, like the numbers could rise higher and higher. Alina, what about the efforts to get aid in? There have been conversations about international aid and also roads being blocked and difficulty of getting aid in. What do we know about what is and isn't arriving and what is, is and isn't needed? Well, at the moment, everything is needed. Uh, the priority is for medics, for re retrieving bodies. Uh, several international um, you know, uh, rescue uh, teams have arrived or trying to arrive into Derna. Two uh, um, uh, ships arrived at the port of Derna, but were really finding it difficult to offload because of the condition of the uh, of the port. And uh, you know, um, many uh, others are on the way as well. But you know, the situation, the infrastructure is very difficult. Many of the roads and the way to get into the Derna are destroyed. So it's a very slow operation for um, international and professional rescue teams to arrive in. However, many have already arrived and continuing to um, to work and the need is going to be beyond a retrieving body there are 30,000 people are homeless they need shelter they need clean water they need food uh, this is an ongoing rescue operation humanitarian operation uh, that will also continue into rebuild um, operation but the priority is uh, you know avoid water contamination retrieve bodies and uh, try as much as possible to stop any spread of diseases there Okay, Lina, thank you very much for that. Thank you.